Hey fellow Vault Warriors, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you amazing one touch kill build. Thanks to latest patch, it is finally possible. I was waiting for this moment to present to you this amazing build. The idea is you touch enemy, enemy dies. It feels so good. 100 Grafton monster. Okay, let's see how much damage by running through it. Oh, I did it. <laughs> now that's the initial special distribution. Of course, if you are not high enough level, feel free to just downscale this build. It works amazing, even if you need to cut it down by a lot. You do need to have at least a chainsaw or auto axe. One of those weapons is a must. For the legendary perks, I'm running four special cards. Doesn't matter which one you have, it's just 20 extra special to spend, taking one for the team, for the damage, and strength is for the damage only. I'm not using this for my special, as it's going above 15, that is a cap. It's just to maximize the damage. It doesn't do much of a difference, so feel free to swap this one for whatever you need. It's a little bit of a difference. And now those are my legendary... Legendary. Those are my regular perks, and we are focusing on damage. So, slugger perks, incisor, one rank of pain train, as we are using it, sprinting in power armor into our enemies, and why just rank one? It's mainly for the different collision and animations, so it's easier to run through the crowd. It's not as much for its damage, but for that. And traveling pharmacy, as I like to carry a lot of camps, not necessary, but handy. Under perception, there's a lot of stuff here. I have seven points. It is all optional. You don't need any perception points. So that's one thing where you can cut those points down. Then under endurance, I have life giver for tankiness, fireproof for extra tankiness, radical for more damage, and revenant if you want to bump the damage numbers even more, even more. Not essential if you don't go after full damage. If you do, essential. Then Charisma, again, it's more than you need, so you can cut it down. I have Party Boy, so my whiskey will give me six strength, strength in numbers to boost mutations, tenderizer to increase damage, and friendly fire to heal friendlies. You certainly could play without friendly fire, or party boy, and it will be still fine. Next, intelligence, I have nerd rage and stabilized. Stabilized is combined with skid shooter as I like to cripple with pepper shaker. So that's why it's here. Then there is scrapper and someone is sharing another scrapper. No, it doesn't stack. Then under agility, we have through hiker. This is actually essential. If you want to go for max damage, you need a lot of meat food buffs. Enforcer for crippling flying enemies, born survival for convenience, and adrenaline for more damage. You could downscale adrenaline to rank 1 and enforcer to rank 1, and it would be still fine. So another point that you can save easily. And then luck. Have bloody mess for even more damage. Ricochet for tankiness. Luck of the draw because I had one point left, so I choose that. If you need your weapon to be even more durable, you would need to skip Nerd Rage and Stabilize. Replace it with Makeshift Warrior. But I don't need it. I have a lot of repair kits, so it can it can break. A class Freak that I'm sharing as well. And Star Jeans to keep my mutations. Good with Salt to keep my food. So those are the perks. Now, my mutations. I'm running Adrenal Reaction for damage. Burn Bones for extra agility, Carnivore for amazing food buffs, Eagle Eyes is here if I would choose to use Vats, I rarely do that, Vats only worth it for bosses, Egghead for my free intelligence buff, you could opt out of it to have more strength, but one strength, not huge loss, I like this extra intelligence, Heart Mentality for special, Marzipan for jumping, Scully skin for tankiness, speed demon to move faster, and twisted muscle to do more damage with your melee weapons. Now the weapons. 
you have choices. Uh, what, would I, what do I have? You could run anti-armor power attack damage chainsaw or bloodied power attack damage chainsaw. Those both are doing really good damage. What I'm running is vampire power attack damage auto axe. And difference between chainsaw, auto axe, it's very little difference. This auto axe, when I'm fully buffed, will do a little bit more damage than a chainsaw. Difference is not huge, but there is a little bit. And I'm using Vampire. This Vampire will heal me, so I don't need to worry about my tankiness too much. And to be honest, I didn't manage to roll power attack damage or any other auto axe, so Vampire it is. Power attack damage is very important. Now armor, I'm using full set of Overeater's Union, but it doesn't matter what power armor you have for the purpose of this build, and it will do. The important part will be to install optimized bracers on your arms and install, where is my torso? Emergency protocols on your torso so you'll be super tanky and never die. So that's for the gear. Don't need really any more stuff. Overeaters is optional too. I have two pieces of overeaters. Other are just whatever I was able to roll. Full set of overeaters. Yeah, it would be better. Not as important. I don't necessarily need it. And I'm using Pepper Shaker for crippling. If you don't have it and you don't see it at any player vendors to buy one, just use any other shotgun. Although, yes, Pepper Shaker is superior for crippling, especially with single barrel, as it fires 16 projectiles per shot. So that's like instant crippling of everything <laughs> in your sight. So that's really good. Legendary effect, doesn't matter. If you can get Vampire, this is awesome. Now into some action. First, without applying the food buffs, but it does work better, of course, with food buffs. So, no food buffs. I woke up some ghouls in here, so now... How you use it? Run, sprint, press attack, and then just continue sprinting and sprint into your enemies. Your enemies, if those are squishy like ghouls, die. That's why it's one touch kill. To do the full damage, you will need a food buff, but that only required. That's why it started without it. Your food buffs will be only required if you want to do the same thing versus like level 100 super mutants. At this moment, my damage is 15742. I don't even have a complete set of food buff, but what I have, I will use. Uh, surprisingly, if you have auto axe with electrified mode, high voltage half I will work on it. This one, I, I'm not sure if that works on chainsaws too. So let's see. Uh, my damage, did adrenaline already expired? Yes, adrenaline expired now. So my damage with red upper, 130-34. With the chainsaw, 124-29. Let, let's test it. High voltage heifer, 124. That didn't change. So it is exclusive to electrified mode on red upper. Electrified mode changes it into energy weapon and High voltage heavy works. I was surprised myself when I discovered it, but that's good to know. Now, the food that boosts my damage. What is it? Uh, anything that increases strength, like death glow steak, can pop that. Glowing meat steak, that's purely melee damage. That's a lot and easy to craft. Another one will be mutant hound chips, a lot of damage, easy to craft. Mutant Hounds too, a little bit harder to craft, lots of damage. Then, Mutton Chops, those are harder, this is from Sheep Squatch, so you need to find some wild Sheep Squatch, kill it and cook it. So this is more rare buff. Uh, there is another version that is harder to craft, but I didn't have meat for that. So what I have, I have, then I, I use Poach Angler for extra AP, so I can sprint for longer. Popcorn, so my thirst and hunger stays up. Uh, Scorchby's heart, that's for tankiness, really good, easy to obtain. Steak for tankiness. 
Uh, where is the damage stuff? Oh, uh, my favorite steep fever blossom tea. We pop that too. Uh, then I should have more. Do I have it? Oh, yeah, I do have it. Yao Guai ribs. That's easy to craft. And Yao Guai rose. That's a little bit harder to craft. So I stack it all up. And now my damage is 198.52. So that's a significant damage boost. You can see all those damage bonuses. Yes, it is a lot of food, but most of that, all that's showing 25% easy to craft. And no, you do not need all of it uh, to, to do good damage. That is a little bit of an overkill, but it's so fun. Oh, there is level 100 Grafton monster. Okay, let's see how much damage by running through it. Oh, I did it. <laughs> I ran through Grafton Master, one touch kill. Okay, that's awesome. No super mutants. Oh, by the way, you can use... I'm not sure if there is a button for that on consoles, but on PC there is a button. If I press X, I don't need to touch the keyboard and I will be running forward. I can press attack and sprint, and then I can basically play with one hand. One hand on the mouse and nothing else. I would need to still use my other hand if I want to jump, but as long as I don't need to jump, I'm playing one-handed now. So that's one-handed master assassin, one touch, pain axe, pain axe build. Super mutants are dying. Okay, let's go on the inside. Let's see those super mutants that are a little bit more tanky. And we are inside one more trick. If you want to sprint and attack for even longer, you can pop a coffee in a can, and that will give you additional opportunity. Okay, I'm running, just not touching the forward button. This will ruin everything. So I'm touching super mutants and killing them this way. Where are you? Here you are. Oh, I'm stuck. Jump. Nope. I'm stuck myself. It's a little bit too hard not to navigate in interiors with this approach, but look at my AP bar. It's not draining because... I pop this one can. And now I'm just running through the super mutant, killing them, all the time sprinting. The only moment I need to slow down is to aim at them. So easy to run through. Look at that. That's the that's the one touch kill build. Uh, why is this guy dead before I even entered? I don't know. I missed one and I'm running out of AP. Okay, slow down. You don't actually need to sprint all the time. You can just run slowly and touch them. That works too. It's just more fun when you can sprint through and kill them all. But look how fast normally they die. That's why it's one touch kill. I like it so much they fix the third person view to do this crazy damage. You just can casually walk <laughs> through any location. You don't need to slow down and stop. Just casually walk. And enemies that you touch die. That's just casual work. And if I'm not sprinting, I'm not even using too much AP. You can see how slowly it's drained. It's only so slow in power armor. That's why I'm using power armor for this build. Otherwise, it will drain way faster, and I don't want that. So that's a casual walk through the super mutant base. With barely any health, but that's not a problem in vampire auto axe. So here it is for you. One touch kill. If you want to know if it works for bosses, it does. It does work for bosses. You will annihilate bosses. I was testing it on the Colossus on the team. Crazy damage. You are boosted like that. Crazy damage. That's, that's per one hit. You do like 25 hits per second. So do the math. It's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage per second. And you use zero ammo. Condition-wise, not too bad. It's going faster on bosses, because bosses has a lot of health and you will be consistently hitting for a longer duration. For regular everyday use, it's not losing much condition. During the boss fight, I need to fix it at least once. So that being said, I hope you like this build. Let me know what you think. I have a lot of fun with it. I will definitely play it now on Twitch, on today live stream, and most likely over the weekend on Saturday live stream here on YouTube. So, yes, I will be using this build for now. I like it way too much. It's so much fun. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching. 
and see you all in the next one.